Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a really great special edition of the show. I've got Master Sommelier James Tidwell from the Four Seasons in Dallas joining me via Skype. Uh, I was up there last week, well two weeks ago as far as the show is concerned, uh, for the Texas Sommelier Conference and uh, wasn't able to meet up with James there but through the magic of Skype we can do this. So uh, James, introduce yourself, let me know a little bit more about you and let everyone else know. Certainly. I'm James Tidwell. I'm with Four Seasons Resort and Club in Irving, Texas. Uh, have been there for 10 years, about eight years longer than I expected to be when I moved down here. Uh, but Dallas has been very good to me, and Texom has been a large part of that. So happy to be here and uh, love the Four Seasons and tell people all the time I have the greatest only job in the world, at least for me. Oh, so. awesome. Awesome. So uh, uh, how did you get into being a sommelier? What, what was your... I guess the aha moment everyone talks about. <laughs> well, I don't know if there was an aha moment necessarily. I worked my way into it through the food world, through culinary school. Uh, I decided I wanted to be a cook. I'd lived in Germany for about six months after graduating university and uh, decided I wanted to cook after that. And so I went to the Culinary Institute of America. And from there, having taken the, the course that they offer on, on wine, and having worked at Liquorama Wine Cellars, which I know doesn't sound like a very highfalutin <laughs> place, but uh, really was a great introduction to wine, I decided I liked wine. And, and from there, went to a restaurant in New Jersey and decided I wanted to get some certifications and learn more. And that's where it started. Awesome. Well, I, I, I totally understand you. I mean, my background has started with more of the fast casual dining. Right. And, and all that. So, um, and starting at Dave and Buster's, not exactly, you know, where you think the wine's going to start. And, and, and my wine moment started at ESPN Zone of all places when the general manager came in and said, Hey, we're owned by Disney. We have more level one Psalms than any company in the right. world and we'll pay for it. Right. So that's, that's how it started with me. Um, right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great program. It was a program set up by a couple of master sommeliers and it is still one of the great wine programs in the world as far as the number of sommeliers they have. And, Really, that's what uh, I would like to do with Four Seasons in a lot of ways is make sure that our people are certified and are going through the programs that really make us well known for fine wine service. Well, I know that when I was there, uh, especially this weekend or this past weekend when I noticed it, uh, I had at least a couple servers, at least a couple that had a pin. So uh, it was great to see that. Um, I don't remember last year if I saw that or not. I didn't really pay attention probably. but. Uh, you know, this year I definitely saw a couple of them. I know uh, Gabe Howe and I had, and his wife had dinner one of the nights, and right. one of his, one of the server we had, he definitely had, I think he had his certified pin. I don't think, yeah, I think he right. had a certified pin. So, right. you know, it's great to see that out there. So uh, yes, it is, and uh, Texom's been a part of that too. We run the introductory course for the quarter of master sommeliers as a lead-in to Texom, and so for two days before the actual conference begins, we're we're certifying people uh, at the conference by uh, partnering with the Quartermaster Sommeliers. Right. And I can tell you that's actually how I started attending. I had taken the introductory course and test and then stayed for the conference. Um, I didn't even right. really know that the conference was there until I'd already had signed up for the test. And then I somewhere along the line, I, I put the two together and I said, well, I've got the time. I could probably take off. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and attend the conference. It just seemed like a natural thing to do. And uh, I was floored. By, by everything and then I, then last year I went um, and that was a great experience and then this year I think is is for me personally probably the best of all of them of all three um, I liked all of the seminars um, there wasn't any one seminar that I could say and eh, I could probably skip this one <laughs> you know uh, I there was probably one last year I could have said well you know I don't really need to go that one but I probably should since I'm paying for it right. <laughs> but um, about all the sessions you know from to the uh, well, even from Saturday sessions, uh, the Kimmeridgian, sure. 
that was wonderful. Uh, the 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 the, the uh, critical tasting, the ductive tasting, you know that that I, I learned I learned definitely a lot in that part, um, especially because right. if I'm moving into certified, I, I really kind of need some more of that. And I know I review sure. wine and all that, but as I told a friend of mine, I have the answers right in front of me. I don't have to figure out what it is. So right. it's 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 easy to be a critic, but it's not so easy to figure out what it is. You know, so. It's it can be an humbling experience when you've uh, got that glass in front of you and you have to go through that deductive method, especially in an exam setting. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> be pretty exactly. intimidating. But I'm glad you enjoyed them. We try to create a level of, of seminar that really does appeal to everyone. And a, even though some of the seminars may be more general or more specific, uh, we want them all to be interesting. And I think we've really achieved that. We've learned a lot of lessons over the years. I think our... I believe our very first seminar at Texom was Charles Curtis, uh, a master of wine, who did a seminar on Nebbiolos. And so we started on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock with 12 <laughs> Nebbiolos. We learned a lot from that seminar. One, we limit the wines to eight wines per seminar because it's just too hard to get through 12 wines in a seminar that's an hour, hour and 15 minutes long. Right. Uh, two, we learned a lot about seminar placement and perhaps starting with incredibly tannic red wines at nine o'clock in the morning was not the best idea for people's palates as we moved through the rest of the day. I mean, the coffee and tea they drank before didn't, didn't, it, didn't prepare them. It didn't, it didn't <laughs> seem to prepare them. We, uh, we needed to reset with some high acid Riesling or something, I think. After <laughs> but, uh, if you go through the seminars, you do notice that we've we've really thought about where we're placing those seminars as well. So we reset during lunch and we can start over again with some white wine seminars or predominantly white wine seminars after lunch. But we are pretty careful about how we, how we place seminars at this point. We, we have learned a lot of lessons and so, uh, it started as a trial and error process. Right. So, so how, how many years have you, have you done Texom and where was, what was the idea to get this thing started? Well, the idea was uh, through a friend of mine and a couple of friends, actually. Uh, Drew Hendrick, who's a fellow master sommelier and the co-founder of Texom, uh, was living in Houston at the time. And we had a mutual friend in the business who kept telling us that we needed to meet each other. We happened to do that at the Dallas Morning News wine competition when we were, by sheer happenstance, playing the main panel and realized each of us realized that the other was the person our friend had been talking about. And that's where the friendship first started. Uh, we then started talking from there about the fact that I wanted to do a Four Seasons Wine and Spirits Professionals Weekend, which is very much what the seminars are that we're doing now. Drew wanted to do a sommelier competition, and so we combined the two ideas into Texon. Uh, that was eight years ago. It was the year after we passed the advanced sommelier exam and the year before we took the master's exam for the first time. And uh, we jokingly tell people we didn't have anything to do that year, so we started texting. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you, I mean, it must have been a, a great learn. It's been a learning experience, I'm sure, but just that alone probably was a, a great learning experience. Oh, it was. I've learned a lot about many things. In fact, I've learned a lot about the business I'm in which is not just the wine business, but the hospitality business and specifically hotels. Because now not only do I work on four of the four seasons, but I'm a client of the four seasons as well, at least once per year when we do Texom. So right. it's a very, uh, very good process to learn all about our business. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so, um, uh, so this is what the eighth year we've, you've done this now? It is, it is the eighth year. We just completed number eight. Uh, we weren't quite sure we were going to make it past that first one. I, <laughs> I remember going to uh, going to our director of finance, who is an area director of finance for Four Seasons, and he's been with the company for quite a number of years, and walked in and said, Drew and I have this idea. And he said, well, let me hear it. And I told him what the idea was, and I gave him our little budget that we had prepared, and he said, well, let's give it a try. I said, okay. And uh, about two weeks before the conference, I remember sitting in at a, my desk in my old apartment and looking out the window and just calling friends in the business and saying, hey, Drew and I have this idea. We really want to do an educational conference for wine and beverage. Would you be interested in sponsoring it? And we drummed up a little bit of money. 
but the checks hadn't gotten here yet. And so when when that first conference kicked off, I was upside down to my employer by several tens of thousands of dollars. And that's really not where you want to be <laughs> employer. So we had a huge impetus to make the first one successful. Right. Uh, mostly that I wanted to keep my job. Uh, I still don't know what what caused our director of finance to sign off on it the first time, but it's certainly grown <laughs> since then. And so it's been a good deal for everybody, I think. Uh, I, not This wasn't a winding, but I had a similar experience with a, a video game competition at Dave & Buster's. And uh, same idea. I walked into my GM and was like, well, here's my idea. And um, this is what I think, you know, and all the budget stuff. And he signed off on it. And it, it, yeah. went, it, it did well. But I was, I had vowed never to do it again, and then I did it about a year and a half later. <laughs> right. Well, that, that Tuesday after Texom is always the day because it ends Monday night. Uh, and we've always put it on Sunday, Monday, so that the trade could come to it. It's primarily a trade oriented conference, though we do have a lot of consumers there. And, uh, you know, the trade usually has Sunday, Monday off. So, that Tuesday morning as we're breaking down and hauling everything out is not the time to ask Drew and I what's going to happen for next year because <laughs> we're not even sure it's going to happen next year. <laughs> Every Tuesday morning of Texom after it's over, we're just not quite sure. And then, of course, by Wednesday, we're ready to go again. Right, exactly. Um, so you also have a competition that goes on. So yeah. kind of walk me through what, what happens in, in these competitions. Certainly. Well, when Drew and I thought of this idea and started Texom, we had found that a lot of people in Texas were talking about studying for the MS programs. And of course, there are four levels to that at this point. At that time, there were three, uh, the last one being the actual MS exam. And what we found was that a lot of people didn't really know what they were getting into. And we wanted to provide them an opportunity to see that. And so we created this competition for people that have a free preview, essentially, of what they're getting into with these sommelier competitions and sommelier certifications. It's uh, very much a standard sommelier competition in one way. Okay. And the format is a theory exam, and it's a written theory exam. It has a tasting component, and that is four wines uh, sitting in front of you when you walk into a room, and there are a couple of master sommeliers on the other side of the table, and they record everything you say and there are point values assigned to certain things and describing the wine correctly and then identifying the wine. So it very much is that deductive process that you talked about in learning in the Saturday seminar where you not only have to identify the wine but you have to describe it. And so you do that for four wines and then there's a service exam portion and it's uh, several stations, several tables set up as if you're in a restaurant and you rotate amongst them to do various assignments as you would do or various duties as you would do in a restaurant while answering questions and being efficient and all the things that you need. Those are the three portions, so practical service, uh, tasting, and then theory. Okay. Yeah, and, and talking with some of, the, some of the people that participated, you know, it's Definitely, uh, it's definitely not an easy process, you know. They, no. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. No sommelier exam, I think, is an easy process, uh, particularly at that level. It is a competition, so we have to be able to differentiate amongst the candidates. Uh, so there are some very difficult assignments, very difficult questions, and very difficult wines. There are also some that are a little more moderate in nature, so that. Uh, people aren't completely alienated. We want people to have a good time. We want people to see what they're getting into, but at the same time, uh, we want them to understand that it is a difficult process. Right. There's no easy button for sommeliers. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, when I'm when I'm at my desk at the Four Seasons and I'm researching wines, I have to do all my own research. There's no button to push to say, okay, I want to find X wine. Where is it? Uh, you, you have to do your own research. You have to find out whether perhaps it's in the state that you work in and who has it and what pricing is. And then, of course, there's the whole business of wine, which is a completely different subject. So we like to give that feeling in the exam that there's no easy button, that you have to do the work yourself. Right. Um, with uh, uh, the Saturday programs that you've had the past uh, couple years, uh, is that something you're looking to continue to do? You had uh, this year, well, the first year you had just a social media track. And then right. this year you had the social media and the tasting track. Is that something you're looking to continue with next year? 
That's certainly a possibility. We haven't set next year's schedule yet. There is a continuing evolution to Texom. We have several options that we're looking at, but none have been set yet. So we're not we're not sure if we will continue those. If we don't, there will be something, but we're not sure it's going to be those. Uh, they have been popular, and so certainly we would consider them again for next year. Okay. Um, with uh, uh, can't remember what the question I was going to have next. Um, <laughs> it's a more of a comment. Like what I what I really liked about this year was um, having the beer uh, session. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I, to Certainly. me, it was more like um, this is a sommelier conference, and it's so focused on wine. But but part of our jobs are to know something else besides the wine aspect. So I think having the right. beer side was was really nice to kind of introduce some things into that. Uh, is that something that you might do more of, or go into spirits maybe at some point? We certainly will expand some of those offerings within the next few years. We've done seminars on tequila previously. We've, uh, let's see, what else? Tequila, uh, aperitifs, digestifs, after dinner drinks. Uh, we did a seminar on flaws in wine. Uh, I, ETS I, yes. Lab, uh, right? ETS I saw Lab, that one, yeah. California came and did that. And, you know, those are the seminars that we're not always sure will go over well with the with the crowd that's there. Even though we're all very interested in some pretty geeky things and, you know, we're all wine professionals or most of us are and the consumers that are there are very interested, we do roll the dice every once in a while. And what's, what we found is that a lot of times when we roll the dice, there are most popular seminars. The beer seminar was hugely popular this year. The, uh, the ETS seminar was talked about more than any other, I think, that year. We had Kevin Pogue from uh, Walla Walla, a professor, come in and with some winemakers talk about the geography of the Pacific Northwest and then present wines. We were afraid that was going to be a little too too much science and not enough right. tasting, but we found that people loved it. So I think we're going to roll the dice on a few more of those in the future. I mean, the, the Kimmeridgean seminar this year was very much that way. Oh, yeah. it was It was great because... It allows somebody like me, especially who's still on the you know the lower rung, not rung, but still on the lower part of the learning curve, I guess, or whatever. Um, just you know, an extra bit of information about it, because you know, yeah, I read, I read it in a book, I read a couple, pa couple paragraphs in a book, and you just, and then you have to like make the connection, but then tasting the wines at the same time and really having that in-depth discussion about it really, I, th I think, is helpful um, for for that. Um, the uh, um, uh, what was the other thing we were while we were talking? There was something else I wanted to bring up, oh. and I don't remember. Yeah, what well, it is. you know, it's it's one of those things as was pointed out in our our discussion panel on Monday morning that a lot of people want stories, right? And and so does Kimmeridgean does the Kimmeridgean chain really provide the story? Well, I think it can. You know, right. yes, that's very geeky. It's it's very scientific. It's a lot of geography that people may or may not want to know. But where does it become applicable? Well, you you can take that whole seminar and create a wine dinner around it. Right. You can do a wine dinner on all the areas that have Kimmeridgean soils. Uh, the same thing could happen with the River Douro. Mm -hmm. It's Douro Duero. You could do right. Ribera Duero. You could do Rueda. You could do uh, Port, uh, the Douro wines over in Portugal. And so you could create a whole wine dinner around one river. And I've often advocated that in classes that I teach to make these things more uh, accessible to people in a restaurant setting, create themes such as that. And so while the Kimmeridgean seminar might not be for everybody, I think it does have applications for everybody. And it's a great way to tie together a discovery of several different wine regions. Well, and, and actually the, the, the Monday morning session is actually where I was heading towards. Um, I think this year having a state of the industry um, session I think was better than the, the beverage, uh, running a beverage program seminar. Uh, because right. it felt like this, it pretty much became a state of the industry uh, seminar rather than, you know, getting into the really boring stuff about managing a beverage program. Um, right. And well, uh, I really, I was, I, that was one of the actually seminars I was really looking forward to, especially after sitting down with uh, Paul Wagner, right? Oh, I sure. Sat, I Paul sat Wagner. down with him yeah. at breakfast, and that's where he got the Hocus Pocus 
uh, thing from, uh, you know, and, and kind of getting a preview of what he was going to say. But, you know, the seeing who was on the panel and having that wide range of people uh, from from a lot of different areas was really interesting. You know, it's it's uh, I think I think it really is great. And like you said, taking, you know, I know Paul was saying, well, we're we're somebody's not going to walk into your restaurant and ask about wines from the Kim Meridian, but I think that's where we take that information and, like you said, we repurpose it so we make it interesting, not worrying right. about that person asking about calcareous soil wines and, oh, here's, here's the two wines I have on my list, you know. Right. Um, but I think, I think that point was made that, you know, if, if yeah, we, I think we all should be talking about that, but making sure that we can uh, impart that knowledge in a fun and interesting way to our guests that walk in the door. Well, there are, there are a couple of ways that that information can be taken and used. And unfortunately, one of them is that and our industry is, has something of a reputation for this, especially in the past. But taking that information and using it without translation in a restaurant setting or in a, in a retail store and overwhelming people right. and really alienating them uh, by wanting to sound knowledgeable and learned and using all this arcane language and, and esoteric information. The other way is to actually take that and make it accessible to people. And that's really what we tried to do with that state of the industry seminar this year. We've called it uh, management of a beverage program previously. We probably should call it the seminar that we don't know what to call it. <laughs> Because it is wide ranging and it has been from the very beginning. Uh, we didn't really get into any nitty gritty this year in terms of how to work with distributors or pricing of wines or things like that. Right. It was much more about the industry in general. Right. We go back and forth uh, various years depending upon what's happened that year. We did get into a lot of the state of the industry last year in a different way because we talked about social media and its effects. Uh, we talked about the role of the sommelier and how that was changing. So it is a state of the industry seminar. It's also how to run a beverage program seminar. It's also a bit of, hey, here are some things that we'd like to talk about. You know, so it's a nice mix. I think this year's panel was great. I really enjoyed last year's as well. We had Paul Greco in last year. Right. As others in previous years, we've had people like Greg Harrington. Bobby Stuckey, I mean, these are people who are really at the top of the game, and you know, we're very fortunate to have them come in and impart some knowledge to us. Uh, we'd like to make it even more interactive than we have, but I think it's done fairly well. Uh, we get a lot of reactions from it, so that's good. We're That's what we want. We want people to think. Right. You know, and and uh, I, I've totally enjoyed it. Now, real, real quick, so I know we're running a little out of time. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this basically the only or one of the few sommelier conferences that are conducted in, at least in the state or in a state or are there other things like this out there in the country? As far as we know, this is the only thing like this in the world. This is the only conference like this in the world. It is an educational conference. It is not a marketing and promotion conference. Right. Uh, we do have sponsors. We don't even guarantee sponsors that we're going to use their wines in seminars. Uh, you know, it's because we tell them we will use wines that fit in the seminars. If yours happens to fit, certainly we will try our best to use it. But it is above everything else an educational conference. And Drew and I made that point to people by saying, uh, and we ripped this off uh, from someone else, but a rising tide lifts all boats. In other words, we're not going to educate about one person's specific wine and promote it. Right. We're going to educate about wine in general, which will create a more knowledgeable buyer and in the end will sell everyone's wine. The pie is huge. This this pie is gigantic. We're not even talking to 99% of our audience because we can't get to their level. Right. Uh, so the pie is huge. There's more than enough room for all of us. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we give people the information they need, but not that not target them specifically with with certain wines. We will uh, continue to do that. That's our, our main goal. And, you know, we've had a fun time doing it so far. It, it is the only one of its kind, though, as far as we know. And it sometimes takes people a little while to, to adjust to that. You know, we've had both sponsors and attendees that we've said, you know, come to the conference once and see right. what it's like and, and then consider what you want to do after that. And once people see it, understand what we're trying to do, they're very open to, to what we're doing. 
Well, I can tell you, like, you know, for me, there's, there's three conferences in the summer that I could attend. I could attend right. the Society of Wine Educators, yours, just, and uh, the Wine Bloggers Conference, which just mm -hmm. happened. Yep. Um, and I briefly thought about doing Texom and Wine Bloggers Conference, but it was just too much to, at, at one time. And I really feel for me, on a, personally for me and professionally for me, that Texom is the most ideal for me. Um, while I am a wine blogger, that's not my job. Uh, I am right. a restaurant manager, so um, that's, you know, wine blog conference would be great and I would love to go and meet all those other wine bloggers, though we do have wine bloggers that come to Texas. We have a lot of the Texas wine we bloggers. Do. Absolutely. Um, and it's great to be able to meet them in person. And then, you, like you said, it's an educational conference, so I get some of that aspect of the Society of Wine Educators, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, time, you know, they're all, they're, all, they're all three right around the same time, so right. you've got to pick one. <laughs> Right. Well, I I was on the board for for three terms of the Society of Wine Educators. I have great uh, respect and faith in the Society of Wine Educators. I love their conference. Um, still involved with the organization, but like you, I don't always get to go. It's the last couple of years. It's been about two weeks before Texom, and so I'm in the midst of planning right. our conference. Uh, but you know, I think you bring up a very good point, which is that. The Society of Wine Educators, Texom, and the Wine Bloggers Conference are well differentiated. They don't compete, in my opinion. They really complement each other. Right. And I feel that way about our educational partners that we work with for Texom because the Quartermaster Sommeliers and Guild of Sommeliers Education Foundation have been involved from the beginning. The Society of Wine Educators came in almost immediately. And now we have the Culinary Institute of America and right. their wine programs involved. These aren't these aren't educational organizations that compete in my opinion. Again, you you have a pie that is so large, there's a huge slice for everybody. And I think those programs are well differentiated. We try to work with all of them at Texom because we are an educational conference. We feel that they all offer complementary services uh, and education. And that's very much the same way with the conferences that you mentioned. I would love to go to the Wine Bloggers Conference. By the time I got around to, <laughs> to actually looking at it this year, it was sold out, so I wasn't able to go. And besides, I'm probably taking up space that somebody could better use because as I tell people, I blog annually. Right. Uh, <laughs> Blog, but it doesn't really get much action right now. Uh, I have too many other things going on and and so, you know, it's a question of what do you have time for? And I would love to put more thoughts down on uh, my blog, but I haven't made the time to do that. So I feel like that at some point in the near future, hopefully next year, I'll, I would like to go to the Wine Bloggers Conference. And I'd like to get back to the Society of Wine Educators Conference. I've presented there several times. I love the, the presentations there. So if you have the time and, and the, of course, the funds, that's right. always consideration too. I do recommend that people go to all three. You know, it's they're all great conferences. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I know you need to get out of here, so uh, you've got an appointment you got to hit. I really appreciate you uh, spending some time with me. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be there next year. I've already got on my calendar. When you did, with the grand tasting, I put it on my phone already, so I'm ready to go. Um, so I'll definitely be up there next year. And um, you know, I really appreciate you uh, taking some time with me uh, today and kind of go over all this. You're most welcome. Thanks for having me. It's uh, great to have you at the conference. Thank you for being such a supporter of it. And, you know, I'm just glad that I could be here today and uh, talk to you about it a little bit. So thank you for inviting me. Really uh, appreciate it. Definitely my pleasure. All right, All right folks. Uh, that's going to do it uh, with, uh, with James. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Uh, hit friend me, up, uh, friend me up above. Click the links below. I'll have links to Texom. We'll also put the links to the other conferences. Give them a little love. Um, and then uh, we'll see everyone again next time. Thanks, James. Thank you.